Hi everyone, my name is Melissa, and in this video we'll examine a scenario that requires a custom grouping and ranking in Power Query. We have a table with record IDs, priorities, and minutes. And we need to identify the top 5% of roads with priority 1 or 2, based on the maximum number of minutes. In our sample, there are 44 rows with a priority 1 or 2. According to that 5% rule, two of those need to be marked, as well as all other remaining rows. Let's go to Power Query. Looking at our data, there is no attribute at present to separate priority 1 and 2 rows from the rest without the use of a helper column. But the M language also includes a function called table.partition. Let's examine that to segment our data. I'll open the advanced editor window. Go to new line to add a new variable. Let's call this partitions. And let's call the function table partition. First, it wants a table. So that's the table that we want to partition. That's the table from the source tab. Next, it wants a column to evaluate in which of the return tables the rows will be placed. So that will be the priority column. Then it wants to know how many groups to create, so the number of tables to partition, and we want two tables, and finally a hash as function, a function to obtain a hash value. This needs to be a number. Here we can say if, I should start with each, so each, if underscore, so that is the current value, is less than 3, then 0, else 1. Let's return this and see what it does. Press done. So this returns a list with two nested tables. Let's click off to the side in the white space so we can see a preview down below. And my first table contains all priorities smaller than three. So those are our priority one and two records. All remaining rows are in that second table. Perfect. So now we have the priority one and two rows together in one table. We can use that to calculate that 5%. Let's open the advanced edit the window again. Add a new variable. And here we can say we need to extract that first table, right? So we need to call that. Let's just copy that variable name, paste that in, and use the positional index operator to access that, that first table, that first item in that list. Let's count the rows in that. So table row count. And just wrap that around it. Multiply that by 0 0.05 to get 5%. And let's also round that. So number round. Zero decimals. This should return two. Let's see if that's correct. Got an additional zero there, didn't I? Right, excellent. So for table one, we need to uh, mark rows based on that maximum number of minutes. And we can use the new M function, table.addRankingColumn, to help us out with that. 
I'll open the advanced editor window again. And let's create table one. So table one, I'll go to a new line and add that table at rank column. Let's see if I still had that pasted. No, I didn't. We need to get that first table again. So I'll just paste that in here. So next we need to assign a new column name. Let's just be really brief about that. I'll call that I. Comparison criteria. So we want to rank the minutes from high to low so as a list. Minutes, comma, order descending. And finally, we can also add a rank kind. Let's do that as well. That needs to be a record, so rank kind. Copy that, equals rank kind dot ordinal. And this will force all items to be given a unique number, even if they evaluate uh, to equal. Let's see if that works. So let's return table one. Press done. That's looking really good. Now I want to add a Boolean filter to my table. So I do not want to keep the rank column. I want to add a Boolean filter just to identify those top two rows that we need to exclude. Let's do that. I'll go back to the advanced editor window. And we'll add a custom column. So table add column. Let's call that exclude. So the column generator for that, we can look at the newly created column, right? So each I smaller than or equal to my n row number. So that's the number of rows to exclude. Let's also assign this a data type, so type logical. Press down. Perfect. Of course, we no longer need that helper column, right? So the column I that had the ranking, we can remove that from this table. Go back to the advanced editor window. Table remove columns. And remove the column I. Let's format this a bit. Done. Excellent. All right. So we've created a new version of that nested table one, and we need to create the same layout for that nested table two. So to that table, we also need to add an exclude column, and we can say that all values in that column should be equal to true. Let's do that as well. So I'll open the advanced editor window again. Let's create a new variable. Let's call that table two. And I'll copy this again. So add a custom column to that. So table, add column. We want that second nested table. Add an exclude column. And each value should be equal to true. Type logical. Let's 
put a comma there as well. Let's return table two, see if that worked. Awesome. So one more thing to do, right? And that's sticking these two tables back together again. So we need to combine table one with table two. Let's call that T and that's equal to table one and table two. Let's return that. Awesome. I hope this video helped shed a light on the table.partition and the table.addRank column functions in Power Query M. Hope you've enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. All the best. Hey everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Enterprise DNA TV. If you enjoyed the content covered in this particular tutorial, please throw the video a like. It really helps us and we really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Enterprise DNA TV channel. Uh, we have a huge amount of content coming out all the time from myself and a range of content creators, uh, all dedicated to improving the way that you use Power BI and the Power Platform. Lastly, check out Enterprise DNA's website, plenty of resources and further learning that you can access very easily. All the best. Take care.